In this video demonstration, we're going to take an in-depth look at extending the Hello World application. Please be aware that in order to work through this lesson, we're making the assumption that you have already completed the first Hello World tutorial and have the artifacts from that tutorial at your disposal, as this extended lesson will continue on where the first lesson left off. Based on that, since this is an extended version of the original Hello World application, I'll start by describing the application design in terms of what we will change at this point. For changes in the existing workflow, we're going to edit the Respond To Greeting task and add another user to this task. We will then configure the outcomes for this step so that both of the users will need to say hello to the greeting before the workflow continues down the say hello path. But if any one of the users selects ignore, the workflow should not wait for the other user's input to follow the ignore path. This is basically the same thing as requiring all assignees to approve an approval step in a workflow, or escape from the approval step if any one of the approvers rejects the request. We will also add an escalation to the respond to greeting task to remind the users to complete the task if they have not done so yet. And finally, we will modify the workflow so that it uses a generated K2 smart form as the user interface for the task instead of the standard SharePoint page. For the data, we won't be making any changes to the Hello World SharePoint list, which happens to be the data source behind the smart object for this application. And for form-related updates, again, we will be replacing the default SharePoint forms with generated K2 smart forms, which will give us the ability to customize the layout and behavior of the user interfaces for this application by removing some unnecessary fields and editing some of the rules. Okay, so let's quickly touch on all the steps for this tutorial before we get started. In step one, you will perform the task of generating the K2 smart forms that will replace the default SharePoint forms used to interact with the Hello World list. By performing this task, we open the door for steps two and three, which will involve editing the forms and views to create new list items and display the list items respectively. In step four, we will create a new view, which will use the Hello World Lists smart object to display a listing of the current items in the Hello World list. By creating this list view tied to the Hello World smart object, we will use step five to demonstrate how to pull that view into the list item display form. We will need to expose the changes to the views and forms from the previous steps to our users. So in step six, we will walk through how to check in the changes to those views and forms. Step seven will lead us into multiple steps of modifying the workflow to add another approver, add escalation, and enable a smart form to function as the user interface. Each of these updates will be tied to the respond to greeting user task. Then in steps eight and nine, we will deploy the workflow to the K2 environment and test the application respectively. Now if you're ready, let's dive in and begin step one. Here we'll replace the default SharePoint forms with generated smart forms to take the role of handling edits and displaying information for the Hello World list. This will give us the ability to make changes to the user interfaces that people use to interact with the application and workflow. Let's open up the K2 application tied to the Hello World list by selecting the application menu option from the K2 group in the List tab ribbon menu at the top of the page. This is going to bring us to the Elements page where, as you can see, we don't have any views or forms created other than for reporting. So to generate the forms we need for this exercise, select the New Menu option, and then from the menu that opens up, select Generate Forms. Go ahead and click Yes on the warning here. But be prepared when doing this for other applications. If you have running workflow instances that rely on generated forms that may already be there or rely on the SharePoint default forms, they may have issues if you come in and generate at this point. Ensure that the checkbox Use K2 Smart Forms as the new edit and display forms for this list library is checked, and then click OK to continue. This may take a few seconds, so I'll pause the video for a moment. Okay, upon completing that task, you will be returned to the Elements page where you'll find several new forms and views have been generated for the list, mainly elements to handle new edit and display functions. 
The next thing we need to do is to make sure that these new forms have been set to replace the original default SharePoint forms for the list. To do that, click on Form Settings from the menu at the top right here. When the Manage Form Settings window appears, we're going to make sure that each of the Form Option Radio buttons are set to one of the Smart Forms, as you can see on my screen here. It looks like it's pretty good on my screen, so when you're ready, go ahead and click Save to continue. And that's it for Step 1, so to quickly recap, in this step we generate a customizable K2 Smart Forms and replace the default SharePoint Forms with them. In Step 2, we will edit the generated form and view that is used to create new list items by removing some unnecessary fields from the view, removing the Add Attachments view from the form, and demonstrate adding a new role to the form. Let's go back to the K2 Application Elements page for the Hello World list and get started. In order to make these next changes, we will first need to check out the new Hello World form by right-clicking on the form item in the list and selecting Checkout from the menu that pops up. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and check out the new Hello World view along with the Display Hello World form and view as well. By checking out the Display form and view, we will be ready for Step 3 when we get there. Now, let's edit the new Hello World view first. To do that, select it and click Edit from the menu at the top to open the view up in the K2 Designer Editor. We're going to remove some fields from this view that aren't really necessary when users edit an item, so select the Response label and then press the Delete key to remove the label from the view. Then repeat this for the Response text box on the right and the Reply Date label and Date Picker in the row below. Once you complete that, your view should resemble mine here with two empty rows. To make this look a little better, let's remove these two empty rows from the view as well. You can do this by selecting one of the empty cells on the view and then click on the Remove Row button from the toolbar menu just above the view. Now I'll do this for the second empty row, and your view should look like this when finished. That's all we're going to do with this particular view, so with that we can click the Finish button to complete the edits and move on to updating the new Hello World form. Back on the K2 Application Elements page, select the new Hello World form from the Elements list then select the Edit button from the menu. Once this form loads in the editor, we want to remove the Attachments view since it is also an unnecessary function in this particular form. To take care of this, you can select the Attachments view on the form, and then click the Remove button from the View Group options in the toolbar menu at the top. Go ahead and click Yes on the warning that appears, but just be aware that form rules and behavior will be altered when you perform this action in the future. Now your form should appear like this, minus the Attachments section. The next edit we need to make on this form involves adding a rule to show a message to the user after the Save button gets clicked. So select Rules from the Form Designer Options menu at the top of the form to skip to the Rules section. Make a note here, you can also make this rule change in the new Hello World view since the button used to create the list item lives in that view, but for all intents and purposes, we'll just make the change in this form. Select the rule On New Hello World when Saved button is clicked, and then click the Edit Rule button to open it up. Briefly take notice of the various actions that the rule is configured to perform here. We will be adding a new action to this list that will show a message box to the user when the Save button is clicked, but we want this action to fire before the browser navigates to a different URL. To get that going, we can find actions that are related to messages by entering the word message into the search box at the top of the Actions window, and then click the Search icon. This will filter the list of actions down to those with the word message in them. Now select Show a Message Action from here, and you'll see a new rule added at the bottom of the list of actions. The first thing we'll change is we want to position this rule to fire just before the Navigate to a URL rule runs. So to do that, hover over the rule with the mouse pointer, 
and then use the up arrow to move the show a message to the user rule up just above the navigate to a URL rule. Now, we still need to configure the message to be displayed in this rule, and you can tell that by the dotted underline under the word configure right here on the page. Click on the highlighted word configure for this rule to open the configure message wizard window. In this window, add the word success to the text box for the title of the message window. Then when you're done with that, add item added to the heading text box. We want to add a little more context to the message, so enter the following text into the body of this message. Your new item was added to the list with a comma. Then, in similar fashion to the context browser inside the Workflow Designer Wizards, open up the current user group under System Values and drag the display name field over to the spot just after the comma in the text you just entered, all that from the context browser. OK, we're done with step two, so click OK to close the rule editing window, and then you can finish out the rest of the windows that appear in order to drop back to the K2 application elements page. Let's quickly recap. We just edited the form and view that are both used to create a new list item in the Hello World SharePoint list. Albeit fairly simple changes in this context, you should have a good grasp on how controls and rules are used on views and forms. Let's move on to step three to edit the form and view that's tied to the display of a list item. In step three, we will similarly edit the generated form and view that is used to display list items by removing some unnecessary fields from the view, removing the attachments list view from the form, and also demonstrate removing an orphaned rule from the same form. If you're not already on the page from the previous step, get yourself back to the K2 Application Elements page for the Hello World list. Now, the first task we'll run through in this step will be to edit the Display Hello World view. So you can go ahead and open that view from the list either by double-clicking on it or select it and click the Edit button from the menu at the top. And just like we did for the New Item view in Step 2, remove the Response controls and also remove the Reply Date controls from the view since they are unnecessary at this point. And we don't need to do any editing on this list item, so go ahead and remove the Edit button down at the bottom of the page as well. And once you've completed that task, go ahead and remove the two empty rows from the view by selecting a cell and then clicking the Remove button. At this point, your view should resemble mine on the screen with the two rows gone that house the reply date and the response controls. You can click Finish when you're ready, and then we'll move on to edit the Display Hello World form. Open up the Display Hello World form now from the Elements list. And we'll start by removing the Hello World Attachments view from this form since we are not allowing the user to add attachments in the new Hello World form, if you recall from earlier. Now, when you complete that task, jump over to the Rule screen. The reason we need to come in here is if you recall from editing the Display Hello World view previously, we removed the Edit button. And in doing this, we ended up orphaning a rule for that button that is handled in this form. Notice the highlighted rule showing the error message here. You can go ahead and select that rule from the page, and then click on the Remove Rule button at the top of the list. From here, finish out the wizard to complete the changes on this form. And at this point, Step 3 is complete, but in a future step, we will be adding more information to this display form, and we'll also be configuring the workflow to use it in the Respond to Greeting User task instead of the default SharePoint form. For step four, the concept we are going to look at will be to create a view that will use a smart object to display a list of the current items in the Hello World list. Make a mental note here. The following steps could apply equally well to smart objects that expose data from other systems. For the sake of time, we're going to keep it fairly simple by using the Hello World list smart object that is already available. From the Application Artifacts page for the Hello World list, Click on the New Menu option at the top of the page, and then select View to create a new view. Upon doing this, you should be directed to the K2 Designer environment. Consequently, this is also where you can create more customized smart objects, views, and forms, but for now, just select Next to skip on past the introduction page. 
We'll do a little configuration of the view right here on the general page. You can name the view List Hello World and add the following description. Lists the items in the Hello World list or just go ahead and use something that has meaning to you. Leave the category set to the default value, but keep in mind, if you're working in your own environment, your values may look a little bit different than mine. Next, you can select List View from the View Type setting. Now here at the bottom, you can see that the data source settings are default to the Hello World List Smart Object. But go ahead and open up the data source settings anyway. You can use this window to pick the desired smart object that is available to your application from here. You can drill into the category that you want and then select the desired smart object. Once you do that, you're good to go. One other thing, I only have one get list type method available with this smart object, which is what will be visible in the list method drop down here. But if your smart objects have multiple list methods, they all should appear here as well. Let's click Next to move on to the Layout Selection screen. On this screen, we want to create labels and controls for the list, so select that option for the layout. Then we'll select the fields that we want to show in our list from the Create Labels and Controls dialog screen. For this demo, select Title, Response, Reply Date, and then make sure to select Created by Value. When you have those values selected, Scroll down to the bottom of the page. I want you to notice here that you can turn on some editing options and allow the user to manually refresh the list. Since we will be dropping this view in a display only form, we can just leave these values unchecked. Just make a note that the options are here to allow for list editing. When you're ready, click OK to close the dialog. Before we complete this step, let's add an aggregation to the bottom of the list to show a row count. To do this under the Title column, select the Title column from the table, and then select the Column tab from the Properties section in the lower right of the Designer window. Now you may need to scroll down if the Aggregation section is hidden from view. Once there, click on Add next to the Count option. This will add a count aggregation for the Title column near the bottom of the table. The view is now created based on what we need it to do for this lesson, so click Next all the way through and then Finish to end the editing session. Once you're back on the Elements page for the application, you should see the newly created view in the list and it's also in a checked out state. So in this step, we created a new list view that shows data from a smart object exposed to your application. It did happen to be the smart object that was already available for the Hello World list. But remember, these are the same steps you can follow if you want to create a view to any smart object available to your application, including ones that expose external data sources. Moving on to step 5, in this step we are going to add the list view that we created back in step 4 to the display form for the Hello World list. This will allow the person responding to the greeting to easily see all the other list items that exist in the Hello World list. If you stepped away from this tutorial for a while and are coming back to this step, remember that we only use the Hello World list as a data source for demonstration purposes. We could have easily used any other smart object available, including those that point to external data sources for this view. Let's begin from the Hello World K2 Applications Elements page. The first thing we need to do is open the Display Hello World form for edit. We're going to use tabs on this form to organize what our users can see a little more elegantly. If you don't see the tab group of button options in your menu on your page, you may need to expand your browser's width, or like on mine, you can select the down arrow here on the right side of the page to open up hidden options. I'll do that here and select the Add Tab button and hit that button twice since the first tab, called Hello World, will be for the form as it looks now, and the second tab will be where we drop the new view in. Give the new tab a descriptive title by selecting it in your designer and enter in Hello World list items. To drop the List Hello World view into the empty form area for this new tab, you can select List Hello World from the context browser of elements on the left and drag it over. 
For the sake of time, we won't make any other configuration changes to this form or the new view, but feel free to explore options like giving the view a title if you'd like. This step is complete now, and you can finish this editing session up for the form. By following this approach to creating views and forms, we can easily create reusable views for use on any form we want. Another thing you get with this, you can also make changes to a view in one spot. Then every form that consumes it will automatically reflect your changes once everything is checked in, thus speeding up your design time and making your form management procedures more efficient. Once you've made changes to forms and views, you will need to check in those items before the changes will be visible to your users. Therefore, we will take step six to check in all of our views and forms. To check all of your forms and views in from the K2 Application Elements page, right-click each of the items that are currently checked out to you and select Check In from the menu that appears. Upon checking in a form that has views checked out, you may receive this warning in a dialog window stating that fact. You can just click OK on this window and K2 will automatically check in the views as well. When you're done, your page should resemble mine here, having everything checked in. With this step complete, we can move on to step 7 and make updates to the Hello World workflow. We've reached the point in this demonstration where we need to make some changes to the existing workflow. In step 7, we will be adding another user to the Respond to Greeting task, as well as configuring this user task so that both users need to say hello for it to move down the Say Hello path. We will also add an escalation to this user task to remind users to complete the task after some time has passed. Finally, we will change this user task so that the workflow uses the new display form as the user interface. Recall that this form replaced the standard SharePoint page. From the K2 Application Elements page, open up the Hello World workflow for edit in order to begin. The first thing we're going to do is add another participant to the user task. Hover your mouse pointer over the Respond to Greeting task and click on the Participants icon that appears in the lower right. You should see the Participants dialog window appear at this point. In this example, I'm going to add Bob as an additional approver, but if you are working within your own environment, select somebody that you can get in touch with to let them know that they'll be receiving a task when you test the application later on. I'll enter Bob's name in the search box and then drag the result item over to the task group on the left and finish it up. Now in order for the workflow to follow the say hello path, we want both of the assigned users for this task to action their task with the say hello action. To do this, hover your mouse pointer over the user task again and select the workflow step outcomes icon that appears in the upper right this time. You should see the workflow step outcomes screen appear. And from inside this window, put a check next to the Say Hello outcome, and then click the Edit button to open the Outcome Rules dialog window. Notice the drop-down that designates only one participant needs to select the Say Hello outcome action. Change that option to All, so that all assignees to the task must say hello for the workflow to follow that path. Then you can click OK and then click OK again to complete the workflow step outcome configuration. Another mental note here, by default K2 always sets up so that only one user needs to complete an action. In this example we do only need one of the users to choose to ignore the task to have the workflow continue down the ignore path, but the workflow will not go down the say hello path until both users select the say hello action now that we've reconfigured it. In this next phase of step 7, we need to add an escalation to the Respond To Greeting task to send a reminder to assignees that are late in responding to their task. Hover the mouse over the Respond To Greeting task again, and right-click this time, and then select Escalations from the menu that appears. An Add Escalation window appears for you to configure a new activity escalation. Click the Add button from this window. Name the escalation Send Email Reminder Twice and then set escalation type to email, then use the escalate after setting and set it to five minutes to be repeated two times. And then click next to move on to configure the email message that will be sent. 
On the email escalation setup screen, select Send Email to Participants, and then you can add a meaningful subject line for the message. I'll just add Reminder Respond to Greeting. Now let's put a little context in the body of the message so that our users know which list item this is for. Go ahead and add the following text to the body, and then add a place under that for title and date created. Once you've added your text, drag and drop the title and created columns over from the Hello World item reference in the context browser on the right. And when you finish that up, go ahead and click OK to complete the Add Escalation screen. Moving on, now we need to edit the Respond to Greeting user task to use the display form as the user interface instead of the default SharePoint form set up originally. You can double click the Respond to Greeting user task step to launch the step wizard. And then move through the first and second screens by clicking Next until you get to the user form screen. Now on this screen, click the ellipses on the form text box to open up the select form tree view, and then drill into the Hello World category to show the available forms for the list. You can select the display Hello World form from this list, and once you've done that, go ahead and click OK. Now we need to look at a couple more settings on this form before we finish this task. To get to those settings, there's a little twisty arrow next to the form label on this window. Go ahead and click that. Now we want to ensure that the radio button to create a new state is selected, and then put the text Workflow User Task into that text box. I won't go into form states with too much detail here, but know that the states are typically used when you want to have the form and its roles behave in a specific fashion for different client events in a workflow. You can look up more information in the Smart Forms User Guide if you have questions about that. Moving on, K2 adds a task action panel to the selected form by default, and it positions it at the top of the form for users when they open the task. Let's take a minute to configure the K2 action panel so that it actually appears on the bottom of the page. You can do this by clicking on the Action Settings button at the bottom of this window, and then in here, change the Workflow View setting at the top of the screen to say Bottom. We can also change the behavior of the form after the Submit button is clicked within here, such as Show a pop-up message, Call specific rule in the form, or Navigate to another page. In this demo, let's just change the default pop-up message that appears to a user after they submit their task. We're finished with that configuration step now, so let's move on to the Rules Configuration screen. Under the section Configure the Rule to Open Workflow, select the rule event called When Display Hello World Executed Initialized. Notice that K2 added some extra rules into this event in order to hook the form into the workflow. We're not going to need to change anything here, but just know that this happens as you work with the design in your environment. Click Next to move on, and then finish the wizard out from the Participants screen. Because we switched to Smart Forms for our application, we have many more options available on how the form should behave for the user assigned to the task. So to quickly recap, in this step we modified the existing workflow so that two users need to respond to the greeting before it will follow the Say Hello path. We also added an escalation of five minutes to the user task, to remind users to complete their tasks, and we also modified the step to use the generated K2 display form instead of the default SharePoint form. With all of the updates to the workflow complete now, we need to push these changes out to the K2 environment. We'll use Step 8 to deploy the workflow. Open up the workflow for edit if you are not already in the K2 design canvas. To deploy the workflow, you can select the File Menu option from the top left of the page, and then select Deploy from the menu. This may take a few seconds depending on your environment, but once the deployment completes, you can go ahead and click the Close and Exit button. And at this point, your workflow should be deployed to the environment. In our final step, Step 9, we will test out the application updates by creating a new list item and seeing the assigned tasks through to completion. 
Open up the Hello World list from your SharePoint site where you just made the updates to the K2 application. And then create a new item. I'll call the item in mine version 2 test 1 for this test. Notice on this form that we are now using the customized K2 Smart Form for new items to capture information from the list. Now, upon saving the item back, you should see the Success Message dialog box based on the Show Message rule that we configured into the form from earlier. If you're logged into your site with your own account, the message should be showing your name as well. While this test is underway, I'm going to pause the video for five minutes here in order to allow the escalation that we added earlier to fire. Okay, the wait is over. We should have received an escalation email prompting us to complete the task. So as you can see in my inbox, the message has appeared and it does have the information in the body that we configured in. You can open the task form right from the original email message or bring up the task list in the landing page of the Hello World site if you'd like. Here I'm going to select the original email notification and then I'll open up the form using the link provided there. Once the form loads up, click on the Hello World list items tab that we added while editing the display form earlier. This page will show the listing of all items that currently exist within the list just in case you have a need to review them before making a decision. Also notice the K2 action panel we configured to appear at the bottom of the page. From inside there select Say Hello to complete this task and submit the form back to K2. We want to validate that K2 has not updated the list item with a response or reply date yet because the second participant, in my case Bob, has not responded to the task yet. Go back to the Hello World list and refresh the page. Okay, good, nothing has changed here yet. Now I'll open up an instance of Bob's browser to the page with the K2 work list and then open the assigned task from there. In your case, have the person you assigned the second task open up their task and select the Say Hello action. Also, notice here that Bob only sees the title of the list item and not the two fields we removed from the display form earlier. At this point, I'll submit this back to K2. I'll flip back over to the Hello World list and refresh the page. And there you can see the list item was updated as the workflow completed the Say Hello path. I want to review the view flow report for this task now. So to do that, I'll open up the K2 reports page for the Hello World list from the ribbon menu at the top of the page. Inside the report page, select the Hello World workflow from the instance count graph here on the left, and then select the view flow icon for the version 2 test we just ran through in the workflow instances list on the right side of the page. Let's check out the decisions that were captured in the Respond to Greeting task for this instance by double-clicking on the User task. The view that opens up from here shows the Say Hello decisions that were made by both assignees and when they made them. At this point, with the test run complete, that sums it up for Step 9. Feel free to continue on and work on your own changes to the application if you need more time for learning. Now let's quickly review what we did in this lesson. In this lesson, we learned how to replace standard SharePoint forms with K2 Smart Forms, which allows us to easily create rich and flexible user interfaces. We looked at ways to customize the layout of those generated forms and views all from within your browser. We also learned how to change the behavior of a form by adding rule actions to perform additional functions when something happens on a form or view. We learned about using views from other data sources by creating a new, custom view that displays smart object data and included that view on a form. By putting Bob as an additional user on the Respond to Greeting task, we learned how to add additional users to a user task step in a workflow, as well as configure the outcomes for that user task to essentially wait for multiple approvals in a workflow with the Say Hello Path setting. Finally, we looked at the ability to add escalations to user tasks by sending an email message to the participants if they were late in completing their assigned task. These features just scratch the surface of what is possible in K2, but for now, knowing how to perform these basic tasks will get you further down the road to building applications for your organization.